supporting them and allowing them to try and make it achievable. Focused practice, professional learning does not necessarily equate with professional growth. We want an opportunity for you to personally be responsible for your development and growing and using the goals as part of that, but engaged in the process. So making sure that you're intentionally improving yourself. Focused feedback, super critical. We're gonna do some training on that this year. Developing training that really goes to the heart of feedback that works for teachers to make them more effective. And then observing and talking about teaching. There really is not a moment to wait, right? Every teaching team, every teacher who's out in a classroom should be continually working on observing and discussing teaching. What worked, what didn't, how am I reflecting, am I working on things with data, am I making sure I'm closing the gap every day just a little bit more. Really, really critical. Feedback, how do you guys feel about it? Tell me a little bit about where you see yourselves as feedback um, givers and receivers. Walk me through your process. Just give me some feelings about where you are. If you were to rate yourself on feedback, where would you be? One, two, three, or four. So how does it fit into our bigger picture? I mean, I think feedback is the most important thing on this teach platform, honestly, more than the number. Mm -hmm. It really lets teachers know what they're doing well or where they need to grow. I think sometimes I personally struggle in really pinpointing exactly mm -hmm. what I want it to say. Um, like I know what I'm seeing when I go in there, but putting it down that's not in a uh, opinionated manner, but a truly factual manner, is something I've really had to work at. Like again, and I think that goes back to that, what would I have done in my classroom? Mm -hmm. Compared to what's really going on in this classroom and um, where I think there's improvement or, or changes or, or what's really outstanding and should be shared with others. Table? Thoughts? Hello. I tend to be highly critical. It's just my personality. Um, there's an excuse. <laughs> there's Donna's excuse. There you go. Thank you for clarifying that <laughs> now. There you go. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm done. <laughs> wow. Um, it, it's part of my personality. I'm a highly critical person. Um, so having that filter, I really have to, like you said, sit down. I write it. I have to sit on it for a day. And there's some emails that I write. I have to sit on it for a day. Save I have to get thin. <laughs> not said yet. Yeah. Not thin. <laughs> I have to get a colleague Mantra. to come over and make sure that I'm getting my point across distinctly, but not over critically. Because I'm also a very succinct person. I I put down what I mean in as little words as possible. And <laughs> Jennifer can definitely attest to that. Mm -hmm. I am very mm -hmm. succinct. I do not want to blow stuff out. And that was actually one of the complaints my professors had with me in college mm -hmm. is we need a 10 page paper from you. Why would I give you a 10 page paper when I can say the exact same thing in four? <laughs> it's just gonna say the same things over and over again. So it's that being sitting down and thinking about it just to make sure it's not overcritical because you don't want them to think it's coming from this place of being, I, I'm totally bashing against you. No, I'm seeing good things too, but I wanna make sure I'm getting that in the correct light. On the other side, the flip side, receiving, same thing. When I receive criticism, I take it to heart. So I have to think about that when I'm giving my feedback. Um, and sometimes I can change it around. I might have to come back and ask some clarifying questions. Mm -hmm. um, okay, you said this, what do you really mean? Mm -hmm. um, to make, and a lot of times I can come around and like, oh, I understand what you're saying. Yes, I can see that. Um, but once again, it's a process. All of it is a process. Um, for just giving feedback and receiving feedback because none of us want to feel like we're being attacked um, on any level and we definitely don't want to feel like we're attacking somebody. So. Well and I think the point about clarifying questions is really important because as you use the coaching model and the feedback cycle with teachers having them practice using what is a coaching format and understanding clarifying questions are what you need that's your out. Mm -hmm. So you're not provocative or defensive there's no understanding that you're somehow being insubordinate by pushing back and challenging. That level of challenge we're sometimes not prepared for. Teachers need to have almost um, prompts, question prompts, mm -hmm. and to practice with that before they engage in a deep conversation about their evaluation, tenure, and contract with an administrator and evaluator. If I were the evaluator, you want to have a dialogue that seems respectful but is also sort of broad and open-ended. 
Tell me more about what you need. What exactly would you be looking for? Walk me through how that would seem. Walk me through what you're asking me. What are you really saying to me? Can you describe what that would look like? Mm -hmm. oh, I, I hear what you're saying, I'm not sure I understand. I hear what you're saying, I'm not sure I agree. Can I have just a minute to think about what that really means? My favorite is when people say, hold on, I need just a second to process. <laughs> Okay, that's always a big signal. That person is not accepting whatever you're saying for whatever reason. And so as a person who's asking questions, you need to back just a, a, a little bit back, an inch back, and think, okay, let me regroup and what do I really need to say? In what manner can I say this so that I can be clear about what I'm telling you so that you'll hear it, right? I, I also think that feedback needs to not just, this is what I saw, this is what I saw, and this is where it needs to. This is where we're going to get to where you need to be. Right. And that piece missing is not, you know, when you when you leave out that action plan or that growth plan, then you're you're missing an opportunity to actually give effective feedback. Yeah, for sure. There's no why. Yeah. And then the why clarifies. Well, your students weren't learning anything at all when I was in there observing, and here's the reason that I know that. There's this data. There's this proof. Mm -hmm. All students were off task. Nobody was listening to you. There was no work generated. I don't even have an assessment sample to look at. The tickets at the door were blank. People were staring at you not knowing. No one raised their hand. I'm not sure what you're doing that you think is effective, but what I saw, what I observed, and here's the factual evidence, shows mm -hmm. me that the, none of these things that are essential in a classroom learning environment were happening. Right. Right? And then the recording of that proves that even more with some weight that your own words are sometimes never received with the validity as much as the videotape can show. I totally see where you're coming from. You're right. I don't see that at all. I was in a summative conference the other day and the principal and the teacher were discussing what the teacher had observed, uh, the principal had observed, and the principal asked the teacher, well, if you were to change something about that lesson, what would you change? Great broad question, mm -hmm. love that so much. And the teacher like immediately articulated and shared what I knew the principal already had highlighted as the, as the big fix. Mm -hmm. And that moment where the principal, in almost relief, reacted to the idea that the teacher was saying exactly what she was gonna say herself, but took ownership of what she knew to be the big fix, was wonderful to see because the teacher said, well, I think I just went from one subject to the next and the transition, there wasn't any. And I think that I could do that a lot more smoothly. And the principal said, interesting, tell me more about that. What would you change? The principal had already scripted her notes and we had gone over it in advance. She said, here's what I'm thinking I'm gonna say. Let me run this by you. It was entirely that the transition was poor, there had been no transition, that she'd wanted the teacher to kind of develop that more thoroughly and understand that it can be an integration, not an abrupt change. You're not right. gonna pivot from one to right. the next. Mm -hmm. First it's language arts, now we're gonna stop into it, now we're gonna do science. And so the teacher herself was, first year teacher said, you yeah, know, I just really feel like that was probably the biggest weak spot. There were other, some, other areas too. What do you think? I think you're right on target with that. And then the principal said something like, you know, I'm not sure for me as a teacher if I would make the same choice as you in terms of how to smooth those things out. I'd love for you to explore some ways that you think you're going to try and improve that. And why don't we talk about it again? I'll do the same thing and then maybe we can share some ideas. What a beautiful coaching moment when all along the principal who was being deferential and very respectful knew exactly what she needed changed. And if we were to talk in the hallway, the dialogue would have gone in a different direction. And we would have had the Catherine, I don't need to address this up for you, I've got four pages, not 10, here's what I need you to fix. So we had already done that. But it was a beautiful moment where the teacher then felt completely responsible for the fix and the improvement, and then also had a great rapport with the principal and said afterward to me, she just listens so beautifully, and I love our dialogue. You know, she's always there for me, so I just feel like I can trust her. Well, that moment, that five minute moment, was all it took for that teacher then to improve the transitions across the board, as well as to improve the relationship. But again, looking at that, you know, coaching for us, mm -hmm. like would you have videos or things like that that we could watch of people doing a great job with yes. coaching with people? Yes, Because I think that mm -hmm. would be like, for us really helpful. Yes. 
and we have internal videos, we have some videos from the state, we also have some teaching channel videos that I can provide. Yeah. But all of that and that modeling, and then you know the reality of it is too, Donna, a great practice is to do it in front of your staff in a coaching model where you role play, and I have a resource kit for you if you want to take that and do it, and we can do some activity before that to set you up that you're familiar and practice with it, but that's what we do. And so in the kit, for example, there are little roll cards and you can rotate people, but there's a script and then you practice being the giver, the receiver, and the observer. Mm -hmm. And then the observer is taking notes on kind of who talks most, who talks what best, and so on, and then you rotate. And the person who ends up being the observer, the question asker, you know, principal role, the evaluator, and then lastly, the person who's um, playing the teacher or the coachee is the person who benefits most because you start out observing and then you rotate to see what it's like to ask the questions and then finally to be in the seat when you've already had that kind of two-person practice experience is wonderful. But that's a very powerful thing to be able to do. And even the modeling of it in front of the group, if we sat down and Marilyn and I kind of played coach and coachee and we practiced back and forth and then swapped, is sometimes very illuminating for teachers who don't have much practice in that area. And I know, Marilyn, I'm gonna put you on the spot, but a lot of people said when they went through the coaching endorsement, is anybody else here a graduate of the coaching endorsement in the district? So for Marilyn and I, people responded to the practice of that and the ways it improved their relationships with people outside of the school environment. Did you find that at all? Yeah, you just you realize how much, you're more aware of how much you nod, how much you say, how much you don't say, body language, and you try, and I realized with me talking in other situations, to not jump in and talk, but sometimes allow the others to talk. And that helped me, just going through that and just having those experiences. So. Yeah, and many people say their relationship with a significant other, mm -hmm. be it a partner or a spouse or otherwise, improves exponentially because once you give away the responsibility to tell and have the person take ownership of that and you only have the power to ask, mm -hmm. the dynamic shifts completely. Mm -hmm. So that aspect of the coaching endorsement and coaching role plays, very powerful, because immediately you feel the weight of your, um, of your own worth through that practice. And even though you're asking the intentional questions, you know exactly where you're gonna end up, because you've got the end in mind, certainly from an educator's perspective, you're gonna come with me, and I'm gonna take you there for 30 questions. And it's gonna be great, and you're never gonna know I'm taking you there. Sometimes dragging you there, right? but um, you're gonna come. And at the end of it, people are always like, that was so great, right? The listening, the opportunity, felt like we were really connecting. I guarantee you that'll be the most dramatic shift. That's the one thing everybody says, you wouldn't believe how great this is working at home, at work, with my relatives, with my mother, for the first time. And so all these kind of moments popped up. And that was amazingly overwhelming almost in the coaching endorsement because people would share things, very personal things, that would change the course of the relationship with a major person in their life. And you know the value of that for everybody listening, I mean, that's incredible, right? To do that in a professional learning community 